Well, with lawmakers on resets in their home districts till next week, so far Congress has been mostly a bit player in the drama surrounding Syria. But does will that change? With me now, Connecticut Senator Richard Blumenthal, Democratic member of the Armed Services Committee. And uh, Senator, I want to begin with the fact that you're, you've got Democratic colleagues from Connecticut, John Larson on the House side, member, uh, longtime member of House leadership there, your uh, Senate colleague, Chris Murphy, all believing that Congress should play a larger role, not just consultation, but a larger role. What say you? I say there has to be a larger role and there has to be consultation, which so far has not occurred. I'm still waiting for that evidence and intelligence that the administration has promised and I'm sure that it will provide that kind of input and frankly so is the country and the world community there's a reason that chemical warfare is prohibited by the laws of war why it's made a war crime and that is that it violates treaties and conventions so the world community has to be briefed as well and ultimately any action we take should be in collaboration with the world community targeted surgical, precise, right. proportionate, and avoiding any troops on the ground. Do you think we're rushing? Do you think the administration's rushing things? There is a need for action, but there's also a need to consider that second and third order, the second and third days. And I'm sure having discussed this issue with General Dempsey, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, that the administration is thinking through what the ramifications will be so as to avoid destabilizing and the spreading of this conflict. Now, if the president has a uh, policy goal that says Assad must go, but the administration is saying any military strike is not about regime change, uh, this is goes to the question that Senator McCain asked. He basically says that's a contradiction. How do you square it? This kind of limited, proportionate response has to aim at those high value military assets that were involved in delivering the chemical warfare, the transporting and the actual execution of that chemical warfare attack, assuming that this evidence does in fact link it with Assad, has to be the target of this kind of surgical and precise attack. I think that is a wise way to go. It avoids spreading the conflict. It limits the kind of ramifications, but failing to act I think also has consequences in terms of the repercussions in encouraging and emboldening this regime. And that's why I think a strike of limited duration and scope, right. avoiding wider conflict is the way to go. And the goal of the strike should be what? Is it, should it be just punishment or is the goal, you're, you're striking him so that he's no longer capable of using chemical weapons. What is the actual goal here of the military strike? Part of what needs to be done, Chuck, is for the definition of that goal to be further refined and explained to the public. I think that the administration very likely is going through that exercise right now and Congress, coming back to your first question, needs to be consulted as to what the goal is. But certainly it ought to be limited to in effect disabling further chemical warfare strikes and also demonstrating that the United States and the world community and again, it has to be with the world community, will not tolerate this kind of horrific, inhumane, and uh, violation of world law. Do you think, just very quickly, do you think that, that the president should hold off on any strike until you guys get back into session? I'm ready to go back tomorrow if the president wants to consult with us and have us vote. But okay. if the exigencies of time require it, he has the legal authority to proceed on his own. Okay. Senator uh, Richard Blumenthal, uh, senior senator from Connecticut, thanks for coming on this morning.